Hoarding is occurring in communities across the United States, and for many, they need help digging out. If you are living in a hoarding situation or want to help someone who is, there are many options for assistance. The first step is finding and utilizing available resources. Local government agencies, nonprofit organizations, and private industry can be the change catalyst needed to return to a safer lifestyle. Additionally, housing laws may offer some benefits to renters diagnosed with hoarding disorder. As a rental housing service coordinator with the Department of Housing and Community Development, my job is to connect residents to resources to encourage safe and healthy households. As part of the affordable housing program, we require regular inspections to ensure homes meet housing quality standards set by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Each unit must pass inspection before residents can occupy the home and will continue to be inspected. Hoarding, however, can lead to lease violations, which can put residents at risk of a suspended housing subsidy or even eviction. When violations are observed, housing staff works with the resident to develop an action plan so the home can pass inspection. Our goal is to ensure all residents are treated fairly and are offered the reasonable accommodations they need. The Fairfax County Human Rights Ordinance prohibits housing providers from discriminating against certain classes of people, including people with disabilities. If a resident has or is perceived to have a disability, housing providers may be required to make reasonable modifications or accommodations. Residents with a hoarding disorder may have the right to request reasonable accommodations from housing providers. For example, a tenant may be able to request that the housing provider pause an eviction to allow time to bring the unit into compliance with minimum health and safety standards. If you are overwhelmed and don't know where to begin cleaning a hoarded structure, here are immediate safety actions you can take. Remove or relocate possessions so that egress doors can fully open and bedroom windows are not blocked. Maintain a three-foot path of travel on stairways and walking surfaces. This helps first responders have quick access to you during a medical emergency. Store combustibles away from sources of heat like furnaces, water heaters, electric panels, or stoves. In the professional organizing industry, we support those living in cluttered homes as they begin taking action to improve the functionality of their living space. Since this process can create stress, we bring knowledge and experience to help decrease our client's stress levels. We work together to reach desired goals by assisting in areas like decision making, sorting, or purging to create better space and flow. These are only some of the many, many ways we can help. A good professional organizer will arrive on time and have a plan of attack for the day's tasks, yet can be flexible since needs and circumstances can change. Our goal is to teach you the skills you need to be successful without us, like decision making or setting personal buying and purging rules. Additionally, we can work with other professionals like haulers for trash removal or government agencies like Code Compliance to help meet your deadlines. To find an organizer, a good place to start is NAPO. You can search by zip code to find an organizer in your area. Certified professional organizers generally have more training and experience and must do continuing education to remain certified. Reaching out to the industrial cleaning industry can also be essential for houses that have excessive animals or garbage. Researching the right company is vital for a successful outcome. When hiring, ask questions about the service and the operation on site. Look for a company that has highly trained employees with years of direct experience in hoarding cases and follow up with their references. It is crucial that the experience be positive and the client be motivated to continue each day. Support groups and therapists may also help the client learn to downsize long term. Nonprofits and local governments offer assistance for hoarding, which are compiled on Fairfax County's hoarding website. Highlights include emergency shelter options if you should find yourself homeless because of hoarding. Home repair grants and loans with downloadable applications. Services for older adults to qualify the individual for additional resources, meal services, and volunteer solutions. Local support groups for individuals and families. 
services for individuals experiencing hardship, including financial aid and utility turn on assistance. Trash and recycling programs, including special pickups. A list of nearby donation centers. Resources for animal care and welfare. Mental health providers, industrial cleaners, or professional organizer search engines, and much more. Some individuals with hoarding disorder need treatment sessions with licensed professional therapists to make lifestyle changes. But if persons who hoard are forced to participate against their will, the sessions will not have successful outcomes. So accepting treatment must be voluntary. Personalized treatment plans for willing participants may include motivational interviewing, Change is difficult, and these sessions improve a person's internal motivation for accepting positive lifestyle changes. Individual counseling sessions can focus on past traumatic events and allow clients to gain insights about why they do things and how to do things differently. Although medications do not eliminate hoarding behavior, Taking the right prescribed medication helps individuals feel less stressed and anxious or makes depressive symptoms less intense. Coaching sessions build better coping skills. Coaching improves stress management and teaches ways to make better everyday decisions about disrupting hoarding activity and dealing with feelings of loss and grief. Cognitive behavioral therapy is the most effective treatment method for hoarding disorder. Irrational thinking is often what drives the repetitive behaviors, and these techniques challenge irrational beliefs and substitute reality-based thinking. Therapists usually work in office settings, but exceptions are made for those clients who would benefit more by meeting inside their own home or by collaborating with a professional organizer. Always, the final step of treatment is developing long-term plans to prevent future recurrence of hoarding, which most often includes encouraging clients to continue participating in community-based support groups. If you are trying to dig out from hoarding, here are easy personal goals to make life more functional create small cleaning goals and complete one goal before starting another. Utilize the one-touch rule by choosing to keep, purge, or donate items and taking immediate action. Donate items if space could be given to something more useful. Purge anything broken, rotten, or that you don't like regardless of who gave it to you. Stall impulsive purchases with the two-day rule. Shop from a list and note extra things you want, but wait two days to decide whether to make the extra purchases. Remind yourself, possessions do not have feelings and don't replace real relationships. Seek the help of others when you cannot move forward. If you or someone you know is in need of assistance for hoarding conditions, please don't hesitate to access Fairfax County resources by visiting our website. To inquire about government intervention, please call Code Compliance for assistance. Help is within your reach. You too have the power to create change.